What's up, guys? Welcome to another edition of Market Rider. Let's beat the market one trade at a time. All right, it's been a crazy week, a lot of stuff going on, but going to be giving you the stock news, so let's jump into it. First on the news, uh, Micron scored a double upgrade this week. Uh, so the chip maker stock got a double upgrade so from Citibank. So it says after scoring a double upgrade from Citibank, uh, stocks on Tuesday hit highest peaks in September 2000. Uh, City announce, Analysis gave a $100 uh, price target on the expected upturn in memory chip demand. Uh, the stock closed Tuesday's trading at 77.26. Uh, so I think, yeah, they're right on target uh, with that upgrade. In my opinion, there have been a lot of car manufacturers who have been stalled, like Nissan, um, for not having the necessary chips that they need uh, for manufacturing. So there's definitely a shortage uh, in chips in the market. Um, you know, manufacturing-wise, I think um, that's going to help a company like Micron continue to grow, um, and you know, kind of justifies that increase of a double upgrade from City. Uh, so when stocks get upgrades, they usually go up in price uh, immediately after that. So like companies like uh, Tesla will get <clears throat> upgraded, and once they get upgrades, then you know they'll go up uh, in price as well. So a lot of things surrounding that. I'm definitely interested to see how it performs uh, moving forward. So Neo today had their Neo Day, so it was this morning. Uh, it was a very interesting. Uh, conference that they had uh, had a lot of things they talked about uh, throughout the whole event um, they also released uh, this car which is the Neo ET7 uh, talked about all the technology and stuff that's going on from there uh, just going to touch on some of the highlights from the event uh, so they released uh, Neo Life which is Blue Sky Lab uh, which they're basically taking the different material uh, from the cars and make it into a fashion line so I thought that was interesting uh, they talked about they have a hundred uh, charge stations and 792 power chargers uh, throughout the country of China and they talked about uh, their new car so um, also they talked about uh, they had 312 daily swaps uh, capacity which is an increase from the previous one um, in their new battery swap 2.0 so they unveiled their Battery Swap 2.0 uh, facility that they're going to be uh, rolling out in 2021 uh, with new capacity. So if you're not familiar with what Neo, uh, Neo definitely has uh, you know a large customer base. What separates them from Tesla is that you can swap the batteries out of their vehicles, um, which kind of makes them more versatile uh, than uh, some of the Tesla models. They also uh, talked about Bluepoint, which is an incentive uh, for carbon emission. So NEO gives you um, <clears throat> different governmental incentives uh, for going green and reducing your carbon footprint. Uh, so they just talked about that service that they have for the company uh, through the NEO app. And lastly, they talked about uh, their 150 kilowatt hour battery. So uh, they have a solid state battery that they're releasing that's going to be 150 kilowatt hours, which I think is fantastic. Um, and, you know, starting rollout of that, which will definitely help drive sales of the different cars as well as shed more light to the company in a whole. So a lot of things going on for NEO. I would say definitely keep your eyes out on them uh, for more updates on what they are doing. Uh, also this week, uh, a group of patriots stormed the Capitol. So during the Senate meeting, the Senate was voting, um, you know, and they got basically the Senate was stormed. So a lot of people uh, stormed the Senate. Um, you know, one person uh, that I know of was killed uh, during that raid. It was a pretty crazy event, um, you know, looking at the videos, all the stuff that happened. Uh, but overall, you know, uh, it put... Uh, the, the state of Washington or well, the state of or the capital in general uh, into uh, lockdown. Uh, so it says Mayor E. Muriel uh, E. Bowser of Washington on Wednesday night uh, issued an order extending the city's public emergency for 15 days, warning that extremists who support President Trump might continue to wreak, wreak havoc on the nation's capital. The order empowers officials to reduce the hours of operation 
uh, for business, orders people off the streets and curfew curfew uh, is issued and expends uh, expend funds as needed uh, to protect public safety. The directive, uh, which will expire at 3 p.m. on January 21st, extends the emergency through the inauguration of President-elect J.R. or Joseph R. Uh, Biden Jr. on January 20th. Uh, it came hours after uh, Miss Bowser uh, imposed a citywide curfew for 6 p.m. on Wednesday until 6 a.m. on Thursday. So, a lot of crazy things going on uh, in D.C. But, uh, you know, it definitely didn't really affect the stock market, in my opinion. If anything, the stock market went up. I know a lot of different uh, CEOs uh, talked about the craziness that was going on. I know the Boeing CEO released a statement uh, that I saw. I read on one of their press releases talking about what happened at the Capitol. Um, and a lot of like big CEOs talked about uh, what was going on in the Capitol. So it was a very interesting turn of events uh, for this week, to say the least. Um, next, we have uh, Elon Musk became the richest person in the world, passing Jeff Bezos. Uh, so Elon Musk became the richest person in the world uh, with a net worth more than $185 billion. Um, so Thursday's increase of Tesla's share price uh, pushed Musk past Jeff Bezos, uh, who had been the richest person since 2017 and is currently worth about $184 billion. Uh, Musk, Musk's wealth surged over the past years, uh, marks uh, the fastest rise to the top of rich uh, list in history and marks a dramatic financial turnaround uh, for the famed entrepreneur. So, I'd have to say um, Elon Musk, as far as fame is concerned, is a lot more famous than Jeff Bezos, in my opinion. Uh, but overall, you know, I think, um, you know, the stock or the companies that they own are all doing good. So, it's not like Amazon's doing bad, uh, Tesla's, you know, doing better than Amazon. I think both companies overall are doing pretty good and I think you know this will actually help um, Amazon uh, you know continue to, to be um, one of the leaders out there as far as uh, innovation is concerned um, when it comes to CEOs in my opinion um, you know CEOs don't really run the company to me they're just like the face of the company the board of directors is what really runs the company um, and both have really good board members um, on both ends on Amazon as well as on um, Tesla uh, and CEO wise Jeff Bezos is a good CEO in my opinion and Elon Musk is a good CEO as well uh, both care a lot about innovation um, but I think um, I'm interested to see how this works because you know it's not really a battle for money in my opinion it's a battle for legacy so you know 85 billion and 184 billion there's not really much of a difference i mean to common people or you know people who don't really have money uh billions of dollars is a lot of money but the people who have money it's really about legacy so in my opinion i think it's a uh, more of a competitive aspect um you know in the business world you want to be number one so you know you gotta think both of these uh CEOs have built their companies from the ground up. Uh, they've both gone through their own share of struggles trying to do that, um, having, you know, large sorts of rejection, uh, and it's basically the entrepreneur spirit. So I'm interested to see uh, how Jeff Bezos reacts to it because I know at one point in time, nobody ever thought that um, Jeff Bezos would have been passed uh, as far as money is concerned. Uh, Jeff Bezos has been a billionaire at least since 2017 from this article. Uh, so, you know, it's not really any news to have someone be better than you uh, monetarily concerned, but I think company-wise, uh, it's kind of a different statement. So I think Jeff Bezos is going to be working on overtime to try to get his company uh, to continue to grow um, and, you know, widen that gap. Uh, because to me, again, I think it's about legacy and just, you know, healthy competition on being, you know, the company that's on top. Uh, so I'm definitely interested to see. I'm not saying they have a rivalry because um, I don't know them, but, you know, I'm definitely interested to see uh, just from the competitive aspect uh, between the two how, um, you know, the different CEOs play off of each other.
Next, uh, we're talking about uh, the vaccine rollout. So vaccine rollout's kind of been a little bit slow in my opinion. A lot of people have gotten it. Uh, so Pfizer and Moderna were the first two to get uh, approved for vaccines uh, to have approval to be sent out by the FDA. Uh, there are some people who have gotten it, some people who haven't gotten it, um, but I think, you know, it was kind of slow. I think Pfizer had less doses than they initially said they were going to have, um, but in this article, it just talks about uh, Biden will release nearly all available vaccine doses and break uh, from Trump administrative policy of holding back um, stock for second doses. Um, so if you know uh, the Pfizer and Moderna vaccine, you have to get two uh, shots so you get the first one and you get the second one and I think the second one was being held back uh, so since president-elect uh, Joe Biden will aim to release nearly every available dose of um, vaccine uh, when he takes office a break with Trump administrative administration's uh, strategy of holding back half of the US vaccine production to ensure second doses are available releasing nearly all of the doses on hand could quickly um, ratchet up the availability of vaccines by allowing more people access to the first dose. It could also be a risky strategy for both Pfizer and BioNTech, as well as Moderna. Uh, vaccine requires two doses administered um, at specific intervals, and vaccine manufacturing has not ramped up as rapidly as may as many experts have hoped. So, you know, increasing this ramped up production is a good thing, but you have to have the companies have the infrastructure in order to do so. Um, so if they don't have the infrastructure to ramp up, then saying you're going to ramp them up really is not going to help the company overall unless it comes with funding. And it still will take time to do that ramp up as well. So there are other companies uh, that are still doing uh, their vaccine trials. Uh, Inovio is one, um, as well as Johnson & Johnson, I think, is still doing theirs. I haven't really heard much from Johnson & Johnson uh, since Pfizer and Moderna have really came out. Uh, Inovio released their f Phase 1 uh, INO4800, um, I think about two weeks ago, uh, or like on a previous podcast, I talked about that. So definitely interested to see more updates coming from that one and seeing more uh, vaccines come out on the horizon other than just the Pfizer and Moderna one. So uh, I have seen some people uh, who I know have gotten it, uh, but they I think they just got the first dose. They haven't got the second one. So um, once that second one comes out, we'll see uh, how that goes uh, for them. So then I'm going to talk about Bitcoin. Uh, so at the time of this recording, Bitcoin's at 40474 uh dollars and 60 cents uh and it's just been ramping up ever since uh i think it's continuing to go up um, i think bitcoin will you know reach uh astronomical levels uh here pretty soon uh just for the simple fact there are only 21 million of them out there and you have to understand that other companies are coming uh out to buy these different bitcoins so uh with 21 million being you know the cutoff uh i think more and more people putting money into it will uh, kind of help to, you know, boost the price of this. And I think we're going to have like one crazy week where it just shoots up uh, to another level where it never comes down from. So, you know, I'm interested to see uh, the path of Bitcoin. Uh, I see more and more people talking about it. Uh, you know, companies like PayPal made it uh, easy for people to buy and sell uh, different Bitcoin. But overall, definitely going to be interested to see how this uh cryptocurrency performs as time goes on next we'll talk about Hyundai and Apple having a potential partnership uh, so uh, Hyundai Motor backed away uh, from a statement confirming its talks with Apple on developing self-driving car uh, that fueled an eight billion dollar surge in the Korean automakers uh, market value on Friday saying instead that it received requests for potential cooperation from a number of companies revising its statement for the second time uh, in a matter of hours, Hyundai said that it had been contacted by potential partners uh, for the development of autonomous electric vehicles, removing any reference of Apple's uh, of Apple uh, shares of Hyundai surged 19 percent after Korean uh, media initially reported uh, on talks with the U.S. company uh, naming Apple initially Hyundai risk uh, the air of technology giant uh, known for. Uh, secretiveness 
when it comes to new products and partnerships. So, <clears throat> yeah, I feel like that deal may have may have been on the works or on the table. And I feel like with Hyundai releasing that information, they may have, um, you know, voided an NDA, uh, you know, potential situation. So I think it may have been something that was true to begin with. And then, um, you know, Apple caught wind of it and was like, hey, you know, you guys can't say that. And it definitely hurts their chances um, in the long run with that. So NDAs are basically non-disclosure agreements, which means like, hey, I'm going to partner with you. I'm going to do, you know, X, Y, Z, but you can't tell anybody about it until, you know, a set date. Um, them saying that definitely boosted Hyundai stock. But, you know, if no other news comes out from that, you know, then it kind of lost them the deal. So um, definitely with a company as big as Apple, um, they're not going to want to tell the whole public what's going on until they have the pro the product, you know, complete and re ready to, um, you know, distri distribute it. So, you know, it makes sense to me why they wouldn't want to come out and say, hey, we're partnering with this company or partnering with this company, especially if all of the, um, you know, I's are not dotted and the T's are not crossed, basically. Uh, so, you know, in other news, talk about Tesla. Uh, Tesla, Elon Musk recently announced that there's going to be a $25,000 Model Y variation that's going to come out uh, in 2022. So I'm definitely excited uh, for that to come out. Uh, going to be looking to see when that actually rolls out. Um, and $25,000 uh, Tesla is definitely going to be a game changer. So... Uh, with Neo and their solid state batteries, that was a game changer. But as far as having a twenty-five thousand dollar electric vehicle, that's going to be a huge game changer for the entire market. Um, I think the cheapest um, Tesla you can get now with full self-driving, I think, is it runs you around uh, fifty fifty grand. So you know it's not really affordable for most people. Um, you know, definitely, uh, you know, and kind of still in the luxury category in my opinion uh most people buy cars twenty five thousand dollars or under uh or you know try to get something a little more affordable um but looking at the rendering uh it looked like it's going to be a pro possible two-seater car um so definitely gonna be interested for some updates on that well that's the stock news for this week um hope everybody is having a great week or had a great week uh and good luck to everybody out there trading for next week and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.